thank you for uh, joining our training course for cloud uh, security essentials, the second day. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, a look on the security architecture. Uh, we discussed uh, the meaning of security architecture and what are the uh, benefits and features of the security architectures. Also, we discussed the uh, cloud computing uh, models uh, and services as ES, PES, and SAS. Also, we uh, discussed the deployment model as private cloud, public cloud, uh, community cloud, and hybrid cloud. Then we covered the common threads uh, in the cloud security, uh, which threaten our uh, security uh, for our applications and data in cloud computing hosting. And today we will start with the uh, uh, new, uh, we will continue with new uh, this session for the architecture and basics and designs. Then we will start the new module, uh, which it will uh, speak in details uh, about the cloud data security. Uh, security considerations regarding the uh, deployment or the cloud computing uh, services uh, as the ES. The ES, as we mentioned, that it's infrastructure as a service. We have some uh, security considerations, which we have to take it in our uh, mind as the multi-tenancy. What is the multi-tenancy? Multi-tenancy is a very important uh, expression uh, in the uh, cloud uh, security. And this it means that uh, uh, multiple users are uh, sharing the uh, resources as you can remember, uh, yesterday we mentioned that uh, one of the characteristics of the cloud computing that it has a shared uh, resources uh, or shared pool of resources. Then multi-tenancy, this means that multiple users are using or sharing the uh, hardware, software, the resources, and this is considered as a risk because as we mentioned that uh, all these users are accessing the uh, data and application from the same host. Although we are virtually isolated, but actually we are running on the same host. Uh, if you uh, let, uh, let me uh, refresh your uh, memory about this. Uh, you remember when we said that this is the uh, host, and when we say host, this means that it's a server, you have the server, and on the server, you, on the top of the server, you have the virtualization software, and on the top of virtualization of the software, we have the uh, VMs, and these VMs are shared uh, with the uh, clients. Uh, or the customers, when you may have uh, VM1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And each uh, customer, you may have one VM or more. And this means that although it is a single server, but it is uh, used to uh, virtually create multiple VMs and these VMs, they are uh, distributed across multiple customers. This is the meaning of multi-tenancy, where uh, multiple users are connecting to the same uh, host or server. The uh, hypervisor security uh, and hypervisor attacks, this is very important. Uh, issue and this we have to keep it in our mind when we are evaluating the security issues for the cloud computing because uh, just as uh, uh, a quick uh, representation that if we consider that this uh, supervisor uh, uh, one uh, or hypervisor one sorry I mean hypervisor uh, 
one. And uh, with uh, Harvey Pervisor uh, 2, of course, if you are a cloud service provider, you may have uh, hundreds of uh, hardware advisors uh, uh, which are managing the VMs, and these are the uh, VMs. What mm -hmm. are attacks which you may have uh, here. Uh, uh, first of all, if there is any hacker, he was able to compromise one of the hypervisor, hypervisors, this means that he will be able to get uh, uh, access to all the VMs under this hypervisor. Also, uh, in the cloud service provider, there will be a trust between the multiple hypervisors because for any reason, if this hypervisor is, is down, then all the VMs, it could be migrated into the second hypervisor, then the user they will not feel any uh, downtime and automatically their VMs, it will be moved on the second hypervisor. Then this means that there is a relation or a, a trust or interaction between the multiple hypervisors. And this means that if, if you have any uh, uh, hacker, he was able to get a control on the one of the hypervisors, he will be able to control on the v, uh, VMs which are hosted by this hypervisor. Also, we can control the other hypervisors if there is any trust between these hypervisors and consequently they will be able to manage or I mean take control over the VMs for uh, uh, these VMs as well. Then the, the hypervisor uh, security and attacks, it's, it's very important. We have to keep it in our mind. Of course, now uh, as a cloud customer, uh, cloud uh, service uh, customer, you are uh, lucky because you don't have to go deeply in these things. It's not your responsibility to manage your hypervisor security and attacks, but just we are providing this information for you because now we are looking from two different uh, uh, views. First view that you are a cloud service provider. You may be a cloud service provider or working for a cloud service provider, or you are a cloud service customer and we are trying to give you all the information and the overview for all the uh, things which you have to take it in your consideration and to understand and when you will be able to uh, evaluate class uh, 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 cloud service providers to understand the difference between uh, the different providers and their services which uh, are provided okay uh, now, uh, network security, I think we discussed this uh, yesterday, but I, I want to uh, just to go through it very quickly to refresh your mind. And we mentioned that in the network security, you have multiple uh, concepts, as we mentioned now, suppose that this is the uh, internet and you can start with multiple zones. Uh, first of all, you have the external zone where the uh, ma machines uh, or uh, the uh, inbound connection is received. Then you have the uh, DMZ, then you have the internal network, and all these, the traffic between the different uh, zones, it should be uh, managed by uh, next generation uh, firewalls, and it's preferred to have two firewalls and of course we have to be from different types uh, also it will be great to have uh, firewall to have uh, ibs ibs it will be a good appliance where it can uh, be able to discover any attacks in the layer uh, seven. Uh, also, it will be a good uh, approach to enable the IBSEC to encrypt the traffic over the network. Although the IBSEC, it will, it may be, not may, it will decrease the performance of the network because uh, IBSEC uh, working on the layer three. But as we mentioned yesterday, that it can be replaced by the MAGSEC, and the MAGSEC it is uh, working on the uh, layer two. And although the MAGSEC will provide better performance than IBSEC and both of them are considered uh, be, be, uh, consider the encryption but the MAGSEC it would provide more uh, or better performance but unfortunately we have a point that all the switches in the network must be aware of the MAGSEC and their software it should support the uh, uh, MAGSEC as well. Then as we mentioned for the network security you have to consider the uh, different zones 
عند في لانز فاير وول تو مانج ذا ترافيك اند اي بي اس بتوين ذا ديفرنت زونز تو انيبل انكريبشن تو يوز سم اذر سوليوشن از دي ال بي فور ديتا لوس بريفنجن وير اتس مونيتورينج اول ذا ديفايسز اند ذا نتورك بين اف اف ات فايند اف ات فايندز اني Uh, data or classified data, then it will stop the uh, traffic and it will not allow this traffic to go outside the network. Uh, virtual machine attacks, uh, I think we covered this with the herb, uh, hypervisor when we explained the hypervisor. Virtual switch attacks. Virtual uh, switch attack is uh, just the virtual switch, you know. Uh, what is the difference between the virtual switch and the uh, physical switch? The physical switch, it is uh, the normal switch we know it. It is an uh, appliance and it has uh, some boards and these boards, it will be used to connect uh, different uh, machines. Then this means that uh, all each machine connect to one board. If the board, one of this board is defective, then it will affect the machine which is connected directly to this uh, board. Only, but in the 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 situation here, I will uh, change the color of the pen. Then you can follow up the new explanation. Uh, if I want to uh, take the virtual uh, switch attack, virtual switch, uh, it is exactly uh, similar to the normal switch. But this switch, it will be created here, gentlemen. You remember when we said that you have the host. And on the host, we have the uh, virtualization. Then we have the VMs. Here, you will have the virtual uh, switch. Virtual switch, it is exactly the same as a normal switch. But it, of course, it does not have boards. And all of them, it will be added the boards as a virtual board. And this will be run in the memory of this machine of the host. And this means that whatever any attack, whatever any attack or risk or problem which uh, threaten the physical switch, it is available or uh, it's still there with the uh, physical, uh, virtual switch. But again, the virtual switch, it has one thing more that uh, it has its own problems because by the end of the day, it's a matter of software. It's a command of a software where it can create the switch. Yani, if you want to understand how we uh, the, uh, logical, uh, the log uh, virtual switch it will work, just imagine like that. This uh, the, the, the actually this a part of the RAM, part of the RAM. Which RAM? RAM of the host, right? RAM of the host. This is the host which is using for the virtualization, and it will the host it will be, be split into the VMs and part of the memory, it will be used for the, uh, as we mentioned, uh, virtual uh, switch. This switches, this, it has a virtual board, seems as a virtual board, this it will be related to VM1, this VM2, this VM3, VM4, and this if the, uh, uh, the traffic it's allowed to be exchanged between multiple VMs, then this means that the data it can be exchanging on the level of the memory between the uh, different VMs. And if it's not allowed, then there will be act as uh, uh, isolation here, and these are not uh, allowed. Of course, you know that here you have one board on the host, or maybe one board, I mean network board, one network board, it may be 10 uh, gigabit per second, or maybe 100 gigabit per second, or whatever. Then, uh, uh, actually, this the uh, switch, and you have the port, or for this physical board for the host, or two boards, and both of them are working uh, together. Then, if there is any traffic, the uh, VM3, one, for example, send a traffic to uh, outside the VM into a different switch or a different uh, to the internet or whatever. When it can be, uh, uh, it can be sent over the uh, uh, over uh, from the VM3 over the uh, physical uh, interface, and it can go outside the uh, host or the VM. This is the virtual switch, and as we mentioned that, uh, or whatever any attacks in the virtual switch, it will be 
exactly the same for the other machines. Just I want to highlight something here, my friends. When we are saying virtual switch, we, we have a, a switch, of course, you know that it works uh, in layer two or layer three, it depends. Is it layer two or layer three? Then it depends upon the type of the uh, uh, layer where the switch is working in and the attacks, it depends upon the layer which it's working. Anyway, I think this it's uh, uh, a complicated uh, matter and uh, there is no time to go through it anymore for the virtual switch attacks type of the uh, attacks, but inshallah we will have another course. It will cover all the attacks and the type of attacks and we will cover the layer two and layer three attacks for the switches. And of course, if you are a member of the WhatsApp group for IT certificates, you will receive the training uh, timing and uh, I will be happy to see you during the, the course, inshallah. For denial of service, again, this is very important, but please, please, I want you to take care about something. When we say denial of service, it does not mean that it's a problem with the network, because usually when we say denial of service, people are thinking that, yes, there is a network, there may be a denial of service or distributed denial of service over the uh, bandwidth and uh, users will not be able to access resources. Yes, right. You are totally right. This is a part. It's one of the denial of service. But for example, uh, in, I don't know if you know this or not, since 10 or 15 years, uh, there was an, a virus called uh, Nimda virus. Uh, Nimda virus, when your machine, it will be infected that you, the machine, it will stuck. It will not respond for the mouse, it will not respond for the keyboard, it will not be able to do anything, and the machine, it will be very, very, very uh, uh, slow. And when we uh, went through the symptoms, we found that the virus, it will create four processes, four processes. And each processes, it will uh, utilize 25% of the processor time. This means that the total uh, 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 time, it will be, or the total processor utilization, it will be almost 100%. Then this is the reason why your machine act as it's hanging. It is not hanging, but it has four processes, and the four processes, they are engaging the processor into 25% each, and this, it, this is the reason why the machine does not have any uh, room to accept any uh, other connection. This is one of the type of the denial of service. And the, the point which I want you to understand here when we say denial of service, denial of service, it's not only network bandwidth. It can be network bandwidth, it can be RAM, it can be processor, it can be storage, whatever, anything, it will not allow you to access the service. Whatever, anything, it will not allow you to access the service, it will be considered as the uh, attack or denial of service. Okay, for the security considerations for BES and uh, what are the security considerations for the platform as a service, which you have to take it in your mind, we have uh, first uh, thing, it is the system isolation. The system isolation, this it will, it's, it's an important concept because you know that what is the best test mean that the, uh, uh, Cloud service provider is responsible for the uh, servers, and uh, the customer is responsible for the uh, developing software uh, uh, and the developing of the application. Uh, it should be application uh, or the uh, developing software, it should be totally isolated from the system, totally isolated from the server user. He should not have access to the server and uh, the uh, uh, developers, we must only be able to manage the uh, 
uh, application for developing the services and the data and so on. And it should be isolated, should be isolated. You should not have any access permissions on the uh, servers because it's under the manageability of the cloud service provider. And even uh, this it will not be easy. Why? Because although the user he is paying for this service, but just imagine if I am cloud service provider and I am providing the service to a customer, five or six or 10 or 100 customers, and each customer he will make his own configuration. Some of them we will enable some patches, some others we will not enable it, some others we want to upgrade uh applications or others they are not upgraded then this means that i will not be able to give user support and this it will affect the level of the service the level of the my the performance and the service level agreement which i signed with you and so on then the best the best approach that the system uh, should be totally isolated from the environment for developing the uh, application uh, users' permissions, this again, very important point. We discussed this today, and we explained that we have the IAAA. And uh, if you still remember the IAAA, it was the identification, authentication, authorization, and accounting. And this is, is very important that all the users must have a proper identity and the proper authentication and the authorization as well. When you have to check what are the uh, proper authentication which you want to use, is it a strong authentication or a normal authentication? Uh, what is the type of authorization? Is it based on a user type or a based on a group or based on a rule or based on a uh, department and so on? Uh, it is very important, please, my friends, don't forget when you are evaluating the IEEE or in some other uh, situation, we would call it IDM, IDM, which is identity, uh, uh, identity, identity management. Uh, don't forget the privileged access. Privileged access it is very important. We have to keep it in our mind because the privileged access is very, very uh, critical. It's risky. Uh, the user he will have uh, administrative controls for applications, data, services. Uh, also, we may for the uh, provisioning the service as well. Then it is highly recommended, highly recommended to enable the 2FA for the privileged uh, access. And when we say this, it's not only for uh, BAS, this it will include for all the other uh, services, even it's yes, BAS, or SES. User access, I think we, we discover we is discuss this again for the user access. Uh, as we mentioned, the user access, uh, the cloud, it will provide a great facility for the user access. It will provide him the facility to be connected through internet or a private network or uh, over a network. Also, it will provide him the permission to access from any device. It can be a disk, a Windows, desktop, Mac, desktop, Windows or Mac, a notebook. Uh, tablets, uh, uh, mobiles, it may be iPhones, it may be uh, Samsung, it may be whatever, just name it, iOS or Android or Windows and mobile. Then these are the things which you have to think about it, how the user, your user will be able to connect and how you will be able to provide them the proper permissions to access the resources. Finally, the malware, trojans, backdogs, and uh, administration nightmares. I think this is very important. The malware, trojans, I think you are familiar with that. These are the softwares which it will, can be installed by good intention or bad intention, and this it will allow the hacker to take control over a PC or a desktop or a server or whatever. But the most important point as a developer, which I want to highlight here, are the back dogs. What are the back dogs? Usually, when you, have, you are a developer and you develop a new application, and there is a problem in the application, you want to have a quick uh, access for the code, make some changes, then allow the, the publish the application to the user, they, they will be able to access the uh, it. The, uh, or the service. The problem here is that backdoors, these are really, as the name mentioned, backdoor. 
will be some key strokes uh, or some uh, command when the developer use it, he will bypass all the authentication and authorization and everything. There is nothing it will stop him until he will reach to the code when he will make some changes. Because we are saying, okay, if we want to make these changes, there is no need to use all the uh, access controls. I am not a user. I want to reach to my code when to make some modifications. This it will be allowable and it will be okay if, uh, in the development environment or even during the production, during the first week, second week, until everything is, is, is stable. But just imagine, just imagine if the, this a hacker, he discovered this backdoor. It may be uh, some key strokes. So when you uh, click these key strokes, you will get access to the code or access to the application direct without any authorization or authentication or anything. When this means that it rises and you may be uh, the application may be uh, exposed to the hacker, and of course, you know, I'm saying uh, ex uh, application exposed to hacker. This means that the data is as well. Okay, the uh, last implementation model, it is the SAS, and uh, SAS, I think we are uh, familiar with it because we are using this SAS uh, usually in our uh, daily uh, operations and daily works. And of course, you know very well what is the main, what is the main, uh, security consideration of the says it is a web application security. 99%, I don't want to say 100%, but let's say 99.5 or 99.9% .9 of the applications on the cloud are published or accessed through the web. This means that all these applications, the interface of the user, it's running on a web server. And of course, we know that the web applications are uh, critical, we have a lot of risks because we are available 24 by 7 by 365 over the internet. The user, he has enough time, he can monitor the server, he can reconnaissance of the server, he can capture traffic, and unfortunately, if the uh, security administrators they are not doing their uh, exercise properly, they may find some attacks, uh, sorry, some uh, vulnerabilities which we can exploit it and we can cause harm for the server. It's very important to uh, monitor your server. It's very important to harden your server against the uh, web application uh, vulnerabilities and to work very close with the uh, manufacturer for the uh, operating system for the uh, uh, web server uh, as IIS or Tomcat or whatever to make sure that you are updating the latest uh, fixes and you are doing the uh, right patching and exercise to protect you. So also, you have to define data policies. Uh, who can access the data in uh, read uh, permission only, who can access it in uh, read write permission, in change permission, and so on. Then these are the permissions which you have to define it as a security administrator or uh, as a, a data owner for your user. Data protection and confidentiality, this again, a very important point. And uh, of course, I am sure that you are aware that when we say security, what is security? Security, it's a CIA, right? What is CIA? Do you know what is CIA? Do you know what is CIA, my friends? Any answer? It is a, a security uh, which stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability or yes. accountability. Yes, you are right. Thank you. CIA, as uh, Jackson, he mentioned now, this is considered the pillars of the security. 
these are the security uh, pillars and confidentiality, integrity, availability. And the confidentiality, this means that we uh, prevent unauthorized access for the data. Integrity, prevent unauthorized changes to the data. Availability, to provide the data to authorized users 24 by 7. Uh, when we say data protection and confidentiality, immediately when we mention data protection and confidentiality, this means that the CIA, as it's very clear, data protection and confidentiality, we have to prevent the, uh, to protect the confidentiality of the data. We don't have to provide the access for the data for the unauthorized users. Also, protection by uh, prevent unauthorized changes for the data. And finally, we have to provide the data for the user when they uh, need it uh, uh, for the authorized users. These are the uh, types of the uh, security uh, considerations which we have to take care uh, when we are evaluating any cloud service providers. Uh, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Go ahead. Hello, Kahiyan. Uh, if you, uh, my friends, if you if you are facing if, if you are facing a problem or not. if you are facing a problem with the virus or the connection, the you can type whatever any connection uh, in the uh, shopping. You can type the whatever any questions you have in the chat, and I will read the chat. Uh, yes, as Andy he mentioned, type your question here. Yes, please. If you have any uh, problem in the chatting, then please type your question in the uh, chatting and I will uh, review it. It's okay, and no problem for me. Uh, uh, techno, uh, please, can you write your uh, question? If you face any problem, uh, if you are facing a problem in asking, then please uh, type your question in the chat, okay? Okay, until uh, Techno, he will uh, send his question in the chat. Let's have a look on the identity trusted cloud uh, service. This it will be the new component in the uh, designs and the architecture of the cloud service provider. Look here, my friends. We have. Uh, I was not clear about co-location. What does it mean? Okay, co-location. This it's considered as how we. Uh, uh, locating of the data, uh, you know that you are you having uh, the cloud service provider. We have multiple locations, and of course, it may be in a different uh, uh, sites. It may be in different uh, countries. I mean, when the co-location that you may have uh, uh, people who are in. Uh, production uh, data center and we have you have their own data the data it should be replicated to other uh, location when it can be accessed during a disaster or whatever when if the production data center is down the other data center it will uh, take over this is what we call it the uh, relation uh, techno he is sending on the uh, chart i missed some part of the class can you make the material available for me sir uh, sure, we will. We are, we will provide you all the recording on the YouTube. Then, if you missed anything, don't worry. You can uh, attend the records again many times uh, over the YouTube channel, and I will send you the URLs for this training course. But I will send it by the end of the course. I will send all the the, the all the recording by the end of the course over the YouTube, and you can attend these uh, courses. 
the folks are like, okay. I hope that I answered your question. Uh, okay, great. Uh, to understand the uh, identity trusted cloud services, let me uh, explain it to you in a very short uh, story. We, because this it will make the interaction and understanding is better. Suppose that I'm a big organization and I want to have uh, a cloud uh, a managed services with any of my partners. Then I will go to one of the cast uh, my uh, partners and I tell him that I want to uh, publish my server in your site. He will say, okay, you are most welcome. It will cost you so and so. Thank you very much. I really appreciate. And uh, but please, I will have SLA service level agreement, and it, in one of the conditions in the service level agreement that I want to uh, uh, what we can say uh, make an auditing for your network uh, at least four times uh, every year to make sure that you are applying the required security controls uh, as recommended and as the best practices. <clears throat> Usually, they will tell you, okay, you don't have any problem, you are most welcome, you can come and order the network, it will be okay. But when you will have the same scenario in the cloud service provider, I don't think that any cloud service provider, he will allow you to make an audit for his name. Why? Just imagine, cloud service provider, it's not providing a service for you only, he is providing a services for uh, multi-tenancy. We are providing for maybe thousands of users. And this means that during the uh, auditing, you may be able to see some uh, critical data for other customers, and this it will consider as uh, a privacy problem or the confidentiality problem for this customer, and he will lose the customer. This is number one. Number two, if you are making an auditing for him, then this means that you will be able to understand the network architecture and how it looks like, how many zones uh, does he have, uh, what are the type of the firewalls which he is using, what are the types of the IBS devices which he is using, and so on. This will be very critical, and this means that you will have the uh, blueprint for his network, and this blueprint it can be leaked by some way from your side or from others, and this it will uh, represent a risk for him. If there is any hacker is 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 utilizing this blueprint, he will be able to uh, compromise his network. When no cloud service provider, he will allow you to make the audit. But how you can make sure that this cloud service provider, he is implementing the requirements of the security controls properly and as uh, mentioned, as the best practice and all this stuff. Then here we will come to the point of the identity trusted cloud service. We need someone who is trusted to tell you that yes, he is doing this exercise properly. Who is able to do that? This, it will be the standard certifications. As if he is, for example, ISO 27001 certified, then this means that, yes, we know that he is doing the exercise properly for information uh, security management. He have a backup, he have uh, security controls, he have a network controls and all this stuff. Because the ISO 27001, he will not be certified against the ISO uh, 27001 clauses and requirements until he properly uh, configured all the requirements for the uh, security uh, controls. Also, it can uh, be used again as the NEST, the SP8053. Uh, just for your information, my friends, or this is a question for you. What is the difference between ISO and the NEST? What is the difference between ISO and NEST? Any, any answer? Do you know what is the difference between ISO and NEST? Okay. The ISO, it's international certificate. It is valid in all the countries. 
when you are working in Europe, you are working in Asia, you are working in uh, States, you are working in uh, China, wherever you are, when ISO, it's a standard. But NEST, it is uh, developed for America, United States only. And it is uh, the standard for uh, United States of America, but it is used also in other countries for one reason, because it's uh, for free. NEST standards are for free. When this means that when you are uh, connecting to, for example, to uh, google.com and type NEST SB 800-53 download, you will be able to download it. You can open the standard, you can read it. You have the uh, all information for free. But the ISO 27001 or ISO in general, the documents, they are not free. You have to pay some amount. I am. I think it is $100 or $150. I am not sure. It's something like that. But of course, you will not be able to download the ISO documents or standards uh, without paying money. Then this is the reason why in some situation, the NEST it may be more popular. But usually, the NEST it was uh, developed for uh, federal, federalization. And it is a little bit complicated because for it implemented or developed for the government when for the small and medium organization, you may find NEST, it's a little bit complicated than the uh, ISO. Uh, then we have other uh, standards, BCI DSS. The BCI DSS, this is the standard for the credit cards. Uh, if you are an organization, you want to make an online uh, purchasing, then this means that uh, you want to use the credit card. It may be Visa, it can be a MasterCard, uh, Dining, uh, Diner, whatever, any card, uh, American Express. Uh, you have you should have some security controls. These security controls are mandated by the PCI uh, DSS. Then, if you uh, implement these controls, they will come and uh, audit your network. If you are uh, implementing the controls properly, uh, based on best practices, then you will be allowed to use the uh, credit cards in your purchasing. Uh, SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3, these are three types uh, of uh, reports. And these reports, it will give you a status about the cloud service provider. Uh, SOC 1, uh, SOC 2, these reports, uh, SOC 1, it's a financial report. SOC 2, it will be a technical report. And both of these two reports are uh, private reports because we, it contains some confidential data. Then SOC 1, SOC 2 reports should be uh, exchanged only with the customers, partners, vendors, or it, it should be uh, shared with uh, anyone who will sign NDA for non-disclosure uh, as a non-disclosure agreement. SOC 3, this is a public uh, uh, report which can be accessed. For common criteria and the VEPS common criteria, uh, this is a standard which evaluate your uh, security controls. Uh, secure, not controls, I mean security characteristics or security features. When you are saying that I have uh, a firewall, this firewall, it will be able to do one, two, three, four, five, or uh, a specific number of features, then we will be able to uh, evaluate it. And uh, of course, this will be a third party, not the manufacturer himself in a third party should evaluate this product and he will tell you yes he is right the manufacturer is able to uh, do uh, this uh, the features which he mentioned and you have uh, seven levels in the common uh, criteria. Uh, vips uh, 140-2 this is for the encryption this is standard for evaluating the encryption. When any device it has encryption, it should be uh, checked and tested and audited by the VIPS standard. And it should have a classification if it's properly uh, configured and it can be used and uh, in your country or not. OK, now we finished. Uh, please, if you have any question, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, Assalamu alaikum, Abu Yahya. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Um, now, now for, for these standards, uh, do we have any overlaps within within the same standard, or or can can we rely on a couple of standards and uh, uh, neglect the others, or we need to uh, uh, consider all those uh, standards? Excellent. This is a good question, uh, gentlemen, and because of its importance, I will repeat it again for those who missed the question, because this is very important, and usually we are uh, find a lot of uh, questions related to this one. Uh, usually, when we are speaking about uh, ISO 27001, and uh, ISO 27001 and NEST, almost both of them are the same. Almost both of them are the same. When this means that you are providing uh, ISMS, uh, Information Security uh, Management System, and both of them are the same, almost the same, because you will find here the con uh, recommended controls, which we call it the uh, annex, and here you have the uh, controls, and you will find both of them almost the same. It may be only difference in the language, because as we mentioned that this, the ISO, it's a standard all over the world, it's international, and the rest, it will be used in uh, America and can be used in other countries because it's for free. Then we don't have any contradiction here, but from my point of view, if you will uh, uh, implement one of them, there is no need to implement the other. Then this is the reason why you will find that when you will go to any organization, it will tell you we are ISO 27001 standard or we are NEST standard. You will never say that we are both of them because this is, it does not make any sense. It's not needed. This is number one. Number two, the PCI DSS, it's a totally uh, uh, separate uh, standard. This for people who require to use the integrated cards. When if you are a normal organization and you don't have any uh, online purchasing, then there is no need to implement PCI DSS. But frankly speaking, if for example, you have the online purchasing and you already uh, have the ISO 27001 uh, annex controls, then you will find that there is no need, the PCI DSS controls they will be very basic and it will be usually included in the annex uh, of the ISO 27001. Uh, but it will be very good to go through the PCI DSS because when the auditor he will come, he will not say, yeah, you are ISO 27001, then we are allow you. No, he will go through the PCI DSS. And if you will go through the BCI DSS controls, you will find that they are saying we want uh, uh, a firewall, uh, we want the IBS. It's very basic uh, uh, controls. For the SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3, these are not standards at all. These are type of reports. Then if you want to evaluate your uh, customer, uh, sorry, cloud service provider, you can ask for the SOC reports. If you want to evaluate your customer, you have to uh, ask for the SOC report. Uh, ask him, please provide me SOC 1 or SOC 2. Then you can understand the uh, technical level, the technical features, and all this information, which it will be very important in evaluating customer. This is not the uh, matter of uh, standards, it's matter of evaluation. The common criteria, this, it will be evaluation of a product security features. For example, I want to buy a firewall. This firewall is saying that I will provide you anti-malware, uh, anti-virus, uh, spam software, URL filtering, firewall feature, IBS. Then who will prove that all these features are working? I can provide you my notebook and I can tell you it's 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 can do uh, it, it can cooking uh, potatoes for example. Uh, who can prove that it is not? Casper, uh, I can say very easily, Casper, they are not qualified. He is not able to uh, evaluate my product. But this means that in the common criteria, we are a third party, we are uh, independent labs, we will take you product, we will evaluate it, we will check the features, and we will tell you, yes, this product can do this uh, uh, features properly, and you can uh, test it and use it in your uh, organization uh, without any problem. Finally, the VIPS 140-2, this evaluate the encryption of your product. And by the end of the day, for the overlap of the uh, uh, 
bundles. Uh, the overlap, it will happen here between the ISO, between the NEST and the PCI DSS. From my experience, and this I may be right, I may be wrong, because you know, subhanAllah, I, I don't know everything. But from my experience till this moment, if you are implementing the ISO or if you are implementing the NEST in one of them, it would cover a lot of the, the feature, at least 99% of the other controls. And this is the reason why in ISO 27001, they will have something called a statement of applicability, SOA, statement of applicability. This is statement of applicability, and uh, there will be another uh, document also to mention all the controls which you implement. And they will tell you, okay, we are uh, understanding that you may not implement all our controls. It may, these controls may be uh, not available in your organization. For example, if you are a closed model company and you are not allowing any uh, connections from outside your uh, uh, network remotely, then whatever any controls for remote access, it will not be valid in your situation here. Then in the statement of applicability for ISO 27001, you have to say all these controls are not applied in my organization because management does not approve the remote access. And they will give you a chance to add another section if you have other control. For example, you say that uh, for BCI DSS, we require some additional controls, then you can uh, add it. Then uh, overlap, mm, it can happen between ISO and NEST, but for the others, I think they will be considered as integrating for each other. I hope that I answered your question. You, you will, yeah. Yeah, you did, Abu Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, any other questions, my friends, before going to the uh, second module? By the way, now we will start the uh, digging more in security for the components of the cloud. Uh, today we will speak about the data security. I think it's a very interesting topic. I think before, please, do you have any question? I don't know if you are speaking, Tegno, I cannot hear you, but again, if you are not able to speak, please type your question in chat. Say in chat. Uh, sorry, uh, I cannot hear you. Okay. Okay, until uh, Tekno, he will uh, send us the uh, question in the chat. I think we uh, deserve uh, 10 minutes as a break. And uh, in the next session, we will start the, uh, the uh, second module uh, very soon. Thank you, and see you uh, after 10 minutes.